Hello and welcome to our broadcast. My name is Larry Hutton and this is Limitless Life where we get to learn how to take all the limits off our life. Man, I'm telling you, it's so much fun to live a limitless life where things aren't limiting you. Sickness and disease aren't limiting you and depression isn't limiting you and sleep disorders aren't limiting you from a good night's sleep and, and um, uh, bad temper and anger isn't limiting you from having good relationships and, and guilt and shame isn't limiting, limiting you. Just there's so many limits that, that, that are on people's lives today that we don't have to have in our lives because of what Jesus did on the cross and through his resurrection. If people would just understand this is not religion, this is relationship, man. We have a relationship with Jesus who came and redeemed us paid the price, shed his blood so that we could be healthy and wealthy and wise and full of God's peace and full of God's joy, living the dream. Like I tell people all the time, as children of God, we can live fun, happy, fulfilled lives every day of our lives, regardless of what's going on in the world and regardless of what's going on in family and everything else. You can be full of peace. You can be full of joy. You can be a happy person. If you study out that word happy, we may get into that later in this series or something, but that word happy is most of the time, the 50 times that that word is translated in the New Testament is translated blessed most of the time. Blessed. Blessed. You're always blessed. That means you're always happy. <laughs> you say, but I'm not always happy. Well, actually, happiness is available to you because you are blessed. So when you say, I'm not happy, you're saying, I'm not blessed. <laughs> People don't even realize that's what they're saying. But if you're not happy, then you're not partaking of the abundant life Jesus provided. He said, I've come that you might have happy and have it more abundantly. <laughs> I've come that you might have blessings and have it more abundantly. I've come that you might have life and that life more abundantly. God wants you happy. He wants you stress-free, strife-free, depression-free, discouragement-free, guilt-free, shame-free. I mean, he wants you free in every area. So let's get back into the series that we started over five weeks ago. Well, I say over five, actually today finishes five weeks. But in this particular uh, series, the subject matter that we're discussing is the redemption of your feelings and the redemption of your emotions. In other words, your, your mental state in any given situation as you live your day-to-day -day life, what is that mental state? Is it a good mental state or and a, and a healthy one, or is it unhealthy? Is it anger and bad temper and depression, discouragement, guilt and shame and frustration and worry and stress and, and hurt feelings and panic attacks and anxiety? And is, is that your mental state? If, if any of those words describe your mental state, Jesus redeemed you from those feelings. Those feelings, those emotions are part of the kingdom of darkness and they don't belong in your life. That's why I titled this series, Negative Emotions Conquered. Because when Jesus went to the cross, he conquered every negative emotion for you and then gave you his happy, gave you his blessings, gave you his peace and gave you his joy so you can live free from the kingdom of darkness feelings where you get to tell, tell yourself how you feel. You don't allow your feelings to tell you how you feel. You tell your feelings how you feel. So if you get ready to fly off the handle at your spouse, you say, uh-uh, no feelings. You shut up. I'm redeemed from bad temper. I'm redeemed from fleshly anger. That's just nothing but selfishness anyway. Everything is all about self. Depression is all about self. Hurt feelings is all about self. The way you treated me, um, woe is me. I mean, everything is all about self. It's all pride, all full of pride. You'll be seeing that as we get into more scripture here. But... Um, you and I have a covenant of peace. Remember Isaiah 54, 10? We have a covenant of peace with God where we can control our feelings because God has made a way. In fact, we saw in Isaiah 59, Romans 3, Luke 1, it's actually the phrase, the way of peace. That's where you walk in a mental state of tranquility, a mental state of rest and and just getting to uh, be like Psalm, the 23rd Psalm talks about, besides still waters. Yeah. Restoring your soul. 
See, that's where you're living in peace and joy all the time. So God made a covenant of peace with us, Isaiah 59 or Isaiah 54, 10. But then remember Psalm 89, 34, he said, I'm not going to break that covenant. I'm not going to alter or change what I said. If I made a covenant of peace with you, then it's a good covenant and it's everlasting. And then we saw in Ephesians 2.14, and I'm going to keep your reminder of this one because this is one you want to live by. Jesus is our peace. If you read Ephesians chapter uh, 2, verses 13 and 14, it, it says Jesus is our peace. Well, he's always your peace if he's with you, and he is. He, he never leaves you, never forsakes you. He's always in you. You're always in him. If you're born again, you're in him. If any man be in Christ, you're a new creature. So you have the God of all peace living on the inside of you. That's awesome. And then Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. This is kind of our foundation text for this whole series. But Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 lets us know that Jesus went to the cross and took your place. That's what the word bore. Jesus has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He took your place on the cross of, of separation from God, took sin in his body on the tree, 1 Peter 2, 24. Um, he took, or 2 Peter, first, 2 Peter 1, 1 Peter 2, 24. Oh, God, am I forgetting that verse? I can't even, I can't even, uh, believe that I'm forgetting forgetting that verse. 1 Peter 2, 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Hallelujah. Anyway, Jesus took your place on the cross and bore your sins and bore your sicknesses and bore your pains and bore your negative emotions. He bore all of them for you. And um, he did it so you don't have to. So now you get to, when, when it says here, he bore your griefs and carried your sorrows, you get to bear, uh, bear his peace and his joy and carry those. You get to bear happy. You get to bear blessed emotionally stable emotionally, strong emotionally. Yeah, that's what you get to bear because he bore it for you. And uh, then we also found in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, <clears throat> the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace. The second and third fruit mentioned in joy and peace, those affect your feelings. Those are emotional fruit, but they're God's emotions. And you have God's joy and God's peace in you 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And if it's leap year, 366 days. You have God's joy and peace in every situation, no matter what you're going through, no matter how hard it is, no matter how hellish it may seem, you have God's peace and joy. And if you'll exercise that peace and joy, pull it up out of the inside of you and declare it, grace will empower you to be what you can't be on your own. Have what you can't have on your own. Do what you can't do on your own. By grace, you're saved. But listen, Ephesians 2, 8, by grace, you're saved through faith. That not of yourselves. It's, it's uh, not of works. You can't boast about it. But then in Colossians 2, verse 6 says, the way you received Jesus, which we just quoted in Ephesians 2, 8, by grace, you were saved through faith. That's how you received Jesus. But now in Colossians 2, 6, it said the way you received him, Walk in Him. In other words, continue to live your life and walk out every day and in every area. Walk out your marriage. Walk out your healing. Walk out your emotions and your feelings the same way you received Him. And that's by grace through faith. So that means you always have to look and see what Jesus did. Oh, okay. On the cross, He bore my depression. He bore my stress. He bore my grief. He bore my sorrow. So I don't have to. And in place, He gave me the fruit of peace. So I have his peace. In fact, John 14, 27, Jesus said, I give you my peace. And then because you have my peace, then he tells you to act like it's so. Right in the midst of when you feel depressed or you feel stressed or you feel a panic attack, John 14, 27 says, I give you my peace, so don't let your feelings tell you how to feel. You tell them how you feel. 
That's what he says in John 14, 27. And then he gives us further revelation just a couple chapters later in John 16, 33. He said, I spoke this to you so that in me you realize you have peace and you possess it. Your ability is peace because I'm with you always. And then he said, but in the world, tribulation is going to come, but you don't have to worry about it. Don't have to get stressed. Don't have to get depressed. In fact, you can be bold and courageous because I have overcome the world is how the end of John 16, 33. I've overcome the world. The Amplified I have deprived it of power to harm you and conquered it for you. Well, if Jesus defeated Satan, then he conquered him of his power. He left him uh, powerless. He doesn't have power against you. Now, he still has power to those that believe in him and allow him to work in their lives. He has works of the, uh, uh, in the works of darkness in the earth today but they don't have any power over us if we yield to believe and exercise our faith in the power of God that God's given us. So uh, he says here, I've overcome the world, I've deprived it of power to harm you, and I've conquered it for you. When he said I've deprived it of power, that means that the power of stress, the power of depression, the power of discouragement, the power of bad temper has all been eliminated. It has no power, just like We were looking at Daniel chapter 3, the last couple of of programs. And and just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego used their faith when they went into the fire, the fire had lots of power. Remember, uh, the, the elite of the elite of King Nebuchadnezzar's army were killed when they got close to the fire. In other words, they had to get close because they were throwing Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire. And so when they got close enough to throw them into the fire, the fire was so hot because King Nebi had commanded to turn it up seven times hotter than normal. It was so hot that the flame came out and killed them. But interesting, even though right there in their hands while they're tossing Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire, the fire was so powerful it killed King Nebuchadnezzar's elite of the elite, but it didn't kill Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And then they went in and it says they fell down bound into the midst of the fire and it didn't kill them. And then a few minutes later, King Nebuchadnezzar came near right up to the mouth of the burning fire furnace and started carrying on a conversation with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Why didn't it kill him? Because the fire had no power. In fact, let's go back and just just wrap this up with with Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3, verse 27, and all the leaders, which was the satraps, administrators, governors, kings, counselors, all the leaders gathered together and they saw these three men whose bodies the fire had no power. I want you to underline that phrase, the fire had no power. And it explains, what do you mean it had no power? Well, not a hair of their head was singed, their garments were not affected, and even the smell of fire was not on them. And then verse 28, Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. There's the whole crux of the matter right there. And it even goes on and said, They frustrated the king's word. The word frustrated literally in the Hebrew means changed. And so they yielded their bodies to the will of God, knowing that God would deliver them. Remember what they said back in, the, in earlier in the verses, uh, in verse uh, what uh, 17 and 18, when they said, um, if you throw us in the burning fire furnace, our God whom we serve is able and will deliver us. But if you don't throw us, the next verse, if you don't throw us in the burning fire furnace, we're not falling down, we're not bowing down. So this says they, they were delivered because they trusted in him. That means they didn't trust God until they got to the point of no return and all of a sudden got afraid and in fear. Uh-uh. No, bless God, when they were being thrown in the fire and the fire was so hot and powerful that it killed the men throwing them in, They were still in faith the whole time. They went right through the the power of the fire and their faith quenched the power of fire. Quenched it. In fact, think about this. I'm going to share Hebrews in just a second in connection with what we're saying right here about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Think about this though. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 6 says, Uh, We have obtained a more excellent ministry uh, uh, in as much as that uh, Jesus is the mediator of a better covenant established on better uh, promises. So 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were under an inferior covenant. They did not have Jesus living in them, didn't have the greater one living in them, didn't have the peace of God and joy of God on the inside of them, and yet they yielded their bodies by faith, trusting God. And when I say by faith, if you will study out Hebrews chapter 11, it talks about man after man after woman and woman and man and all these people of faith. And it, and it actually boasts about their faith, how it healed them and delivered them and did this and this and this. And it says in verse 33 of Hebrews 11, by faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions. We know that's a reference to Daniel and others. They quenched the flames of fire. There's a reference to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They escaped the death by the edge of the sword, and that's with all the different battles the children of Israel went into. Their weaknesses was turned into strength, and they became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight and we have it better off than they did. Now, I'm, I'm shared, the reason I shared this story of Daniel 3, because of what 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11 says, it tells us that every true story of the old covenant was included in the Bible as an example for us to learn from both the good and the bad, to learn what not to do when the children of Israel were in unbelief and the Bible says that they uh, hindered God from doing God. They actually stopped God from being able to do what he wanted to do in their lives. Amen. So the Bible says that all their stories in 1 Corinthians 10, 11, it said that they were written as an admonition. If you look up the word admonition in the Greek, it means uh, to draw attention to or to admonish or to exhort. So let's allow the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to draw our attention to what God will do for anyone who stands in faith, including you, including me. Let this story admonish you. Let it exhort you to not fall down to pressures, not fall down to depression, not fall down to bad temper, not fall down to the hardships of life. You are a winner. You are a conqueror. You are an overcomer. You are victorious in Christ. You are supposed to rule and reign in righteousness, the Bible says. So let's go back. Let's go back to John 16, 33. In the world... You shall have tribulation, but be bold and be courageous. I have overcome them all for you. I have deprived all of them power to harm you and conquered all of them for you. I want to I wanna drill this home before we pick up here next week because we only have a few more minutes here for this program, but... I want to drill this home for you today. Isaiah 53, Jesus bore your depression. Jesus bore your anger and bad temper problems. So don't, don't blame it on personality. Don't blame it on he or she or they made me mad. No, no, it's, it, you're yielding to the devil. You're yielding to the kingdom of darkness emotions if you do. Jesus bore your depression. He bore your bad temper and anger. He bore your stress. He bore your panic attacks. He bore your discouragement. He bore your hurt feelings. He bore them. John 16, 33, he took all the power out of them because he conquered them for you. So when he bore them, he actually conquered them. But when he conquered them, he made them powerless. But they're not powerless if you don't go into them with faith. This is where faith and grace work together. You don't just use faith and, and not use grace. You partake of grace. Grace is God's response to your faith. Your faith is your faith. Your faith is your response to God's grace, what Jesus already did for you. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went into the fire by faith and God's grace flowed. So grace and faith work together. Their faith was in, it is written, 
the Old Commandments, the Old Testament commandments, thou shalt serve no other gods before me. So they were not going to fall down and worship that God. So they knew that God would deliver them. They just knew it because they trusted God. That God said, I'll deliver you and I'll, I'll, with long life, I'll satisfy you and show you my salvation, keep my commandments. So they're thinking, you know what? We're going to keep this commandment, not falling down and worshiping any other God and God will deliver us. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stayed in faith and their faith drew grace and grace quenched the fire. And so it couldn't hurt them. It'll quench every fire you have. So he bore your stress. He bore your depression. He bore your bad temper, your panic attacks, your hurt feelings. He bore it all, all those negative emotions, and then he took the power out of them. So when those feelings come against you and you yield to them, you are not yielding to what Jesus did. You're yielding to what Satan has done. Don't do it. You have the power over all the power of the enemy, Luke 10, 19, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Get a hold of this, man. It'll be a life-changing thing for you. That's why we have the book available that we're teaching out of. This is what we're teaching out of is Power, uh, power, uh, power Ups, the CD that I mentioned uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday, actually, Power Up. But uh, Internal Affairs is the name of my book, Internal Affairs, Emotional Stability in an Unstable World. So get a hold of the book, and then if you want the audio that goes along with the book, I teach some things in the, in the audio series that I don't teach in the book and vice versa, but the audio series is free from me, free from me. And you can get the audio series and the book on our website at larryhutton.org, larryhutton, H-U-T-T-O-N dot O-R-G. You can order on the website, larryhutton.org, or you can call our toll-free number, 888-887-WORD. It's a toll-free number that's pretty easy to remember because if you remember 888, which is just like 1-800, 888 is toll-free just like 800 is. So if you remember the 888 and then the first three uh, numbers of the num phone number is 887. So you just keep carrying the eight outs, 888-887, and the number seven is perfection. So think of, ooh, glory to God, I'm going to call a perfect phone number, 888-887-WORD. Oh, yeah, the word is perfect. <laughs> so call 888-887-PERFECT, <laughs> W-O-R-D. Call 888-887-WORD, W-O-R-D, because we're a word ministry, and you'll get somebody on the phone. I don't care if it's day or night. Doesn't matter what time zone you're in. Doesn't matter whether it's a holiday or whatever. Just call the 888-887-WORD and you'll get a hold of somebody that can take your order and help you out. I'd like to close this week out and ask you for a favor. For those of you that are not partners, if, if this, I mean, if, if this hasn't helped you, fine. I'm not asking you to do this. But if these, if these scriptures and this word things that we've been sharing. I've not been giving you my opinion, my theory. I've just been showing you what the Bible says. And Jesus told me years ago, if I show you this and you do it, you'll never have another down day the rest of your life. And you know what? For decades now, I haven't had a down day because I'm doing what I'm teaching you. So if this teaching has been a blessing to you, would you pray about becoming a partner? Or would you consider, or if you, you know, I just tell people, you know, the way the Holy Ghost leads us is by peace. So you don't even have to pray about, you can say, Lord, I'd like to become a partner. I'm going to go ahead and start giving $10 a month or $100 a month or $1,000 a month, whatever. And if you have peace about it, then the Holy Ghost is hooking up with you. If you start to become a partner with Larry Hutton and, and you think, oh man, something doesn't feel right. I just don't feel like I should do it. Then stop. Don't do it. But I'm asking you to become a partner today if you're not a partner, whether it's $5, $15, $35, $3,500 a month. I don't care what the amount. I can, I, can, I can help you spell million. In fact, somebody asked me one time, this is funny. Somebody asked me one time, Brother Larry, I want to become a partner. How much should I give? And without thinking, I mean, I literally, it just came up out of me without thinking. I, I thought later, I thought, man, I just spoke without thinking, which is not usually wise, but, but I, it came out of my spirit. So it was wise. It was God speaking. Uh, he said, what should I give? And I said, what you'll be faithful to send. And the reason I said that is because there's a lot of people that have said in many years gone by, for over 40 years traveling ministry now, uh, people have come up and said, Brother Larry, I love your teaching and you've changed my life and you've helped me and I'm going to become a monthly partner. And I've yet to see, and some of them years and years and many years ago that they said that, and I still haven't seen a dime or a dollar. 
So if somebody's going to become a partner, I just tell them whatever you'll be faithful to send. Because if you, if you have $100 a month that you can give and be faithful to do it every month, then do it. If you have 10, start with 10. Start where you're at. And here's why. If you start where you're at, I've tried to help so many people. If you'll start where you're at, so many people say, I don't have anything to give. I'll bet you have a penny. You could find a penny if you have to every month. Go out in the parking lots and find a penny. You have something to sow. And when you sow, you're going to reap because it's the law of giving and receiving that's, talk, that's talked about in Philippians chapter 4. You start in verses 15, bound to verse 19. If you want verse 19, God to supply all your needs according to his riches and glory, you got to be a giver. you got to be a sower. So here's an opportunity to become a partner with Larry Hutton Ministries. Call the toll-free number 888-887-WORD. That's 9673 is what WORD spells on your key, key dial. So 888-887-WORD and tell them, I want to become a monthly partner with, with Brother Larry and Liz. And uh, they'll take your partnership down, set you up. If you want it auto-debited from a bank account, auto-debited from a debit card, auto-debited from a credit card, whatever, they'll do that. Or they'll set you up if you want to mail a check in or however you want to do it. They'll set that up for you. And they'll also take your orders of any of the products that we've been uh, talking about. They'll take your orders and get it sent out to you right away. And uh, set you up, let you know, hey, if you have a prayer request, give that to them and they'll, they'll forward that to Liz and I as well so we can pray for you. We love you. We're going to pick right back up here next week, week number six of Negative Emotions Conquered. Have a Jesus-filled day. If you would like to schedule Larry Hutton to speak at your church, event, or conference, go to LarryHutton.org and choose Contact Us from the menu bar or call one 1- 888-887-WORD Do you ever feel like you're riding a non-stop emotional roller coaster through life? Do you want to stop the seemingly endless ups and downs and rounds and rounds? Then it's time to learn what God has to say about getting your feet and your emotions back on solid ground. It's all too easy to let life's events, experiences, and circumstances dictate how we feel, speak, and act. But God gave us a much better way to live. Larry Hutton's life-changing book, Internal Affairs, and CD series, Free From Me, will give you the Bible answers and show you how to keep every negative emotion under complete control, all the time, in every situation. You will learn how to overcome all your negative emotions and live in peace all the time. To order Eternal Affairs and Free From Me, go to LarryHutton.org or call 888 887-9673. Experience more of God's goodness by joining Larry Hutton again for more simple, practical teaching in God's Word. Go to LarryHutton.org anytime to watch this broadcast and many others. You'll also find special offers and other resources to help you thrive in life. Or check on Larry and Liz's schedule so you can join them at a meeting near you. Go to LarryHutton.org or call... 888-887-9673.